Folks, my name is Luke, this is the wonderful Susie, and today with the Outdoor Gear Review, we are here to talk about Susie's overnight adventure. This is After the Camp. Yay! <laughs> That's right guys, I'm Susan, and I just recently went on my first solo trip. And I have to say a big thank you to everyone. The reception has been great. It's been very kind. The comments are great. I really appreciate the feedback. Honestly, the trip was fantastic, and I'm kind of itching to do it again. <laughs> yeah. The coolest part for me was being able to, like, Susie comes home, she gives me the memory card, and then I get to edit the video, so it's like I get to see, like, everything that she did and went through. That was so <laughs> cool. And I have to say that your filming was awesome. She did the simplest, like, photographic technique that I'm going to copy. I never even thought about it, but you would take the camera and put it down on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought those shots are just really, really awesome. <laughs> I got really tired. It was tiring to carry everything and to do the shots. So I found myself, I would set the camera and, you know, I would walk a good distance, then come back and get it. And then it just got to the point where, like, setting up the tripod, making sure everything is level, it gets old really fast. <laughs> so the easiest thing for me to do was to just put the camera on the ground. And I thought it looked a little artistic when I first did it, so it worked out. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> and it's funny how many comments that you got about that. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, one person said, like, um, like, how far you would walk away from the camera and have to come back was huge and it was <laughs> yeah yeah i was trying to do something different than the way that we typically film together i wanted it to be different and right. i wanted to have my own style but then i just started taking like shortcuts because i realized how hard it is <laughs> how much time it takes time yeah i i mentioned in the video like this isn't a long hike and someone was like, well, you got to realize you went back and forth. And it's like, that's true. I, mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't a long hike, but the filming added to it tremendously. It's amazing how much time that it adds yeah. to a trip. It was still great, though. Still great. So for the most part, guys, my trip was uneventful. May not be what you want to hear, but it really was uneventful <laughs> for the most part. Someone asked, did I really see a bear? And yes, I did, but I only saw the butt of it <laughs> as it was kind of running over a hill. So I wasn't able to film it, wasn't able to find it or see it again. So just a very small glimpse. I was in bear country. It's an area that I'm familiar with. So I wasn't concerned, I wasn't worried. It's common. As you saw in my video, we had already stumbled across several piles of bear poop. So no big deal. Talking about living in bear country, we're so accustomed to it. Like we see bears maybe once or twice a year, no big deal. I've never heard of anybody ever getting attacked by a bear. Have you? No. Ever? Never, not around here. And they are coming more into our communities every day, just checking social media. People are sharing videos. The bear was on their back porch, getting the pumpkins, getting into the dog food. They're coming more into our communities, but I still have never heard of anyone getting attacked by a bear. Never. For the most part, when you're out hiking in the woods, the bears are very scared of people. Right. There will be that random attack ever so often, but it's so random. It happens so infrequently. It's not really something that you have to worry about as long as you're taking the proper precautions. Right. It's very important to take those precautions. And I did the best I could with my with my bear bag too. You know, it's not an ideal situation. It wasn't the perfect situation like the manual is going to tell you to do, but I felt like it was good enough for my situation. Mm -hmm. So now that we have that out of the way, why don't we go over some comments and questions? Yeah, I think I need to answer one right off the bat though, because <laughs> everyone was so concerned that I spilled the beans to Madison's oh, upcoming yeah. proposal. And I want everyone to know, don't worry, I did not do that. I probably should have stated in the video that we had talked to her about it, she had talked to us about it, and it's something that her and her boyfriend had clearly discussed way before we ever got involved. So she knows, again, like I had said, I don't know when it's coming, if it's coming up soon, if it's going to happen. It's definitely on the table, and that's all that we know, and I think that that's all that she knows. It's on the table. Who knows when it will happen? I think we have a good idea that it's probably going to happen soon. But don't worry guys, the secret wasn't ruined by me or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if she has time to watch our videos, but either way, yeah. nothing was ruined. It's, it wasn't a secret. 
<laughs> okay, so Kyle has a question here. What is the number one way to make someone feel comfortable who has never camped before? E.g. a girly girl who hates bugs. I think you need to start in your backyard, honestly. If you're not very comfortable doing it, you probably shouldn't go out into the backcountry or to a remote area. Start in your backyard. And if you hate bugs, I think that's just something. You can take all the precautions to make yourself more comfortable while you're camping. Nobody says that we have to go lay on the ground or just put a sheet on the ground and lay on it. So you can have any kind of supplies that you need to make yourself comfortable, but start small, start in your backyard. I think that is the best advice. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Okay, Mark says that he is really glad to see Susie becoming more of the channel. Everybody loves Susie. Thank you guys and gals so much for the super nice feedback. Everybody's been awesome. I think the coolest part in my opinion is the amount of women who watched the video, commented on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, it just makes my heart happy. Definitely. Yeah. It makes me happy too. And you know, I am part of the Outdoor Gear Review. May not be in every single video, but I think that's what Luke and I kind of envisioned is that we are a team. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we're gonna do every video together or that I'm gonna be in every video. It's more of like, what can I bring to the table that enhances the channel? And that's what I hope that I'm doing is something right. that enhances it. And he's gonna keep doing what he's doing and we're gonna keep doing adventures together and do solos and throw in some more of my solos. And I'm here to give you ladies advice you know, I'm here to encourage, maybe inspire you to try something, even if it's in your backyard. Okay, this one comes from Kathy. How and where do you carry your pistol when you conceal? She's not comfortable with carrying a gun on the trail, and partly because she's afraid that it will go off. I'm pretty sure there's a squirrel in there. I think so, too. Uh, so she wants to make sure that it's in the safest place possible. Now, when it comes to carrying and conceal, unfortunately, folks, because of YouTube, we cannot really talk about this all this much, mm -mm. all that much, because we've done this previously. I've mentioned it. And it's unbelievable how much crap YouTube gives me. They right. demonetize the videos. I don't know if I even want to get into it. Right. So, Kathy, why don't you send me an email and we'll talk more. Lisa wants to know, what is the verdict on Madison and her boyfriend? And do you buy whole bean or ground coffee? All right. So, with Madison and her boyfriend, nothing has happened as of yet. Uh, she will be going on a trip to visit him. And my guess is that's when maybe she will get a proposal. It's not set in stone. All Luke and I did was give our support when we talked to both of them. That's where it's at now. That's all that we know. And as for coffee, I typically go ahead and buy it ground. Okay, Lee says that Luke has the inner need to get out and to do his lone wolf thing. Do you see yourself maybe needing the same thing now that you've had a taste of being alone? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I got a taste of it and I could understand why you like solo trips. And it is very nice. Yeah, for me it's like therapy. I can simply think about anything and everything, and that does me a lot of good. Right. Uh, let's see, Tan says, I hope there's a video from your family, but I know it's not easy. I'm assuming he's talking about like all of us together. Unfortunately, that is not easy. I feel really bad. You guys have asked for that for a long time, and if you've been a fan of our channel for a long time, you know we've been doing this for years and years, and basically our kids are grown. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people, they keep mentioning like you know kids and like can you get them out can you do them and they're basically adults. they're adults yeah. so our daughter's gone and lucas is very busy i know you've mentioned like let's go on a trip and he's kind of like yeah yeah <laughs> he's doing his own thing i mean he's going to a concert in charlotte tonight with his buddy they'll be gone all night yeah madison's in the navy yep. so it's as far as a family goes, it's just you and I and the dog. That's it. So maybe <laughs> I'll bring the dog next time. <laughs> okay, Melissa says, have you and Luke ever thought about living off the land? No. No, we haven't. I, I like the idea of it, mm -hmm. but for like 99% of people, it's not realistic. No one is able to sustain themselves and live off the land full time, unless like you have a serious operation like already set up. I mean, it takes so much planning. It's just not realistic for most people and I, I know there's other YouTube channels out there that portray that sort of stuff but I can tell you a lot of it's not real a lot of the stuff that you see on television isn't real yeah it's not real I, mountain men on history or whatever it is they like to portray those people being out in the middle of nowhere living off the land it's not real no. in fact they film that show <laughs> very close to where we live and uh, Eustace Conway all that is crap yeah, he, he talks about he's so far from a grocery store and there's like a food lion like 10 minutes from his house. So yeah. 
you know, a lot of things are staged. I think living off the land is like a fantasy almost. Yeah. Like we want to achieve that. People do. People would like to achieve that, but I don't think it's necessarily realistic. So mm -hmm. I want to enjoy the land and enjoy nature, but I've never had that desire to fully live off of it. Yeah. Realistically speaking, it takes a community to survive. You're not going to be able to go out in the woods and live by yourself. True. Sorry. Okay, Susie, how about on the cheap family camping series? And I mean really cheap. I think camping can be what you want it to be. And if you want to go to Walmart and buy all your gear and go car camping and go to campgrounds, that's fine. I won't ever be able to recommend certain gear for certain situations. If you are a dedicated backpacker or through hiker, you need to invest in good gear. For families that want to camp, it's absolutely achievable in many different ways. Right. You know? I, I think of... Like, our neighbor is a really good example of this. Yeah, he bought a tent because he wants to do some camping and whatnot, and he bought it from Walmart. And he's like, Luke, that tent leaks so bad. So he, he went on to say that he re-engineered it. That's not the right word. But he, <laughs> he essentially put a tarp over the top of it, and then it became waterproof. Right. You can do things on the cheap. Mm -hmm. I'm all about saving money. You and I are. I mean, before we ever filmed Adventures, we had a cheap Coleman eight person tent that we bought from Walmart that we would come and camp at campgrounds with our kids. You know, state parks, go to the campgrounds, pay the fees. Yeah, if families want to get out there and camp and they don't have a lot of funds, it's fine. You can still do it. Oh yeah. You know? Do like a combination of car camping, have your tent, you know, if a mm -hmm. rainstorm comes in and it starts leaking, hop in the car and have fun. More than anything, more than the budget, it's all about in here and in here and the what you're willing to create. Right. What you create and the memories you get from it is, is well worth it. So just remember that it's achievable for anybody. Ellen says, hi, Susie. Saw your video with my wife and they thought your filming skills were superb. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So he was wondering if you felt safe when you were camping out there, if you had any second thoughts, especially when it comes to bears. The answer is no. I did not have any second thoughts about it. I felt safe and it was a place I was familiar with. Let me elaborate and maybe answer some of the other comments that I've seen. People say, you know, why did you choose that? Why didn't you go to your land? Well, the place I chose was a state park and it was relatively close to where I live, not very far away. In fact, our land is more remote and farther away. I planned everything out. I felt very safe. I was safe. I was familiar with the area, but I wanted to show off something more than just our private land. I felt like for my first solo trip, I really did need to get out there and do something and not just come to our private land. So the next question comes from Amber and essentially this follows up with the previous question, but how did I feel about you being out there alone? And what about communicating with loved ones and whatnot when you were out on the trail? That is something that quite a few people brought mm -hmm. up. Now, I was nervous. Come on. We yeah. have to be honest. Now, I, I thought about her nonstop. But the thing is, like, we had our plans well made. I knew exactly where she was going. I, I knew that she had communication there. She should be able to, like, text me periodically. My thoughts were on her, but I wasn't really worried. I know the area. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, in the end, everything was very well planned out for her trip. She let me know exactly what she was going to do. She stayed in touch. And if a couple of hours went by, didn't hear anything, I would have gone looking for you. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We had it planned out. That's what I'm encouraging everyone to do if you decide to do your first solo is plan it out and let someone know where you're going. Make sure someone knows all of your plans. A lot of people ask about like satellite communication and whatnot. And for myself, that is not something that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, I firmly believe as just a personal choice, I take full responsibility for my actions, even if that means something bad happens. Right. Now, if you decide that you're going to go out all the time, would we be getting some sort of communication device for you? Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> she is the type of person that she would want one. I would like for her to have it. Let's just go over some comments real quick in the video because okay. there was themes, like there was lines of questions that people would ask. First off, do you like Taster's Nasty? No. Were you drinking Taster's Nasty? No. <laughs> Susie hates Taster's Nasty and she will never drink that crap. No, I need like, <laughs> you know, the level up coffee. I need the, what is all those good stuff people send us? Like the Max, Espresso yeah. and the uh, Trader Joe's instant coffee is really good. There was another one, like the gold coffee. 
Cubano gold. Yeah, Organo or, gold. Organo. Yeah. The Organo gold, that stuff's what I need. I saw so many questions about Taster's Nasty. No. I can't believe you're drinking it, Susie. Oh, she's not. Oh, no, I'm a lady. Come yeah. on. When I say nasty, it is nasty. It is nasty. <laughs> Okay, so I went through every single comment and as of right now, I think there's like five or six hundred of them and Wow, as mentioned before like there's so many ladies out there just saying, you know, good work. You're inspiring I think that is the coolest part. Oh, I think I did see someone ask me They said oh, you're not carrying a shovel. So maybe you didn't bury your number two <laughs> I guess some bathroom questions. Oh, okay and So typically what I do when I'm at camp is you find a spot away from your camp to use the bathroom and I I always can just find a rock or some kind of stick and able to dig a hole if you need to bury a number two. It's never been an issue. And but of course if you need a shovel, you can carry a shovel, but right. usually a rock works fine. Oh yeah. A lot of people were talking about you carrying and concealing. I didn't I never saw a single negative comment about that. Yeah, that's good. You made a really good point is that like if you're not comfortable carrying a gun don't carry one. You do need to think about your own protection. How are you going to defend yourself? What are you going to do? That's just a common sense sort of thing that everyone needs to consider. Right. Now, um, in the video, you mentioned that there's evil in this world. I saw two comments and the individual stated, I think it's really unfair for you to say that everyone in the world is evil. First off, folks, let me just go ahead and set the record straight. <laughs> That's not what she said. The devil's in the details. We know everyone's not evil. <laughs> you guys are not evil. But I want to be very clear. You can't be naive. Right. There is evil in this world. There are people out there who do bad things. There are people out there who prey upon women. Mm -hmm. Be realistic or something bad is going to happen. You definitely need to be realistic. I actually addressed one of the comments and I, I never said all people are evil. I do not feel that way by any means. But I said people are evil. I live very close to where some people were hacked to death on the AT for no reason other than someone was evil. A person did that, not an animal. I will say it again, people are evil and you need to be aware that, you know, bad things happen, dangerous things happen. There's a lot of stories of bad stuff on the Appalachian Trail, which runs very close to mm -hmm. us. I've even heard of people putting down nails. Like that's just evil. Oh, what, yeah. what else do you call it? I'm not sure what else you would call it. But no, never once would I ever generalize an entire group of people. Group of people. And and you just you saying, didn't do that. Yeah, I'm just saying in general. The thing I want you all to consider, and just to keep in mind, the real world is different than fantasy time. I don't have to say that for most people, but like, there is evil out there. You need to be prepared for it. Take Damascus, Virginia, little trail town along the AT. It wasn't that many years ago. I don't remember how many people were arrested, but they would hike the trail at nighttime beating the crap out of campers, stealing their stuff. It happens. Yeah, it, it really does. And I just don't want anyone to be naive. I want you to be responsible for your own safety. Yeah. So please be smart and please be careful. Yeah. I saw numerous comments from people who stated they wanted to walk the riverbed as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in the mountains, that's what you did when, when you were a kid. Sometimes it was frozen, sometimes there would be no water in it, but you played in the creek bed and you went up the mountain, down the mountain. Yeah, and I couldn't believe it when I was hiking down there. There was no water in it. It was crazy. I'd never seen it in all the years hiking there. Never, ever seen it empty, essentially. So I was tempted to do that. I may just go back and mm -hmm. get you to hike with me. You may have to do that for fun. Um, that reminds me, I saw a comment, someone saying maybe it wasn't safe to, to camp where I did beside the creek, but I'm not sure if the camera really showed. The creek was way down. I was very high up, and we are in a drought. The, the chance of rain that night was very, very slim, but even if it was going to pour all night, the water still would not have been able to come up over the bank and into my campsite, so. It would take a flood of epic proportions. For it that really happen. would. I think sometimes the camera just doesn't really show how steep things are or high. Mm -hmm. it, it can be a little misleading, but. I think for the most part, we pretty much touched upon everything. Yeah, for the most part, I'm gonna do a gear loadout so you can see what gear, and I'll talk a little bit more about maybe like small stuff that some ladies might have questions about. Pretty uneventful trip, really. It was a success. It was really hot, I will say that. Like, mm -hmm. hotter than I expected. Um, but other than that, really, 
not a lot of juicy stuff to share because it's just not there. It was a very peaceful, successful trip. Congratulations, Susie. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. you did, she did such a good job. Everybody notices it. Congratulations. So if I missed a question and you really want it answered, please send me an email and I will do that. Okay. I think for now this video is probably long enough. It's probably over 30 minutes. Yeah, I should stop talking, so. Nah. All right. All right, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in for this episode. Until next time, strength and honor. By the way, the Outdoor Gear Review is agenda free. We're not selling you anything. We're not selling your information to anyone. Um, you won't find affiliate links. We appreciate you all. Everyone, take care. Strength and honor. Listen to these two. Wow. And the crows say bye too. All right. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>